السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, most gracious, most merciful. الحمد لله رب العالمين. All praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى, the one who has created, the one who nourishes, the one who cherishes, the one who sustains, the one who provides, the one who protects. وأصلي وأسلم على أفضل الخلق وأكرم الرسل نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. We send blessings and salutations upon the best of creation, the most noble of all messengers, Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, his household, all his companions. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless them all. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless you all. And may Allah سبحانه وتعالى grant us such goodness that the day we leave this world, we will not regret what we have done on earth. This evening, mashallah, tabarakallah, we would like to learn something from the life of Brother Junaid Jamshed, rahmatullahi alayhi, for indeed there is so much that we could say. And I think what's important for myself and what I did say immediately was look at the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon Allah bestowed upon him gifts upon gifts. And the biggest of those gifts was the realization that we are going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for you and I, the biggest gift that we could be given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in fact the realization that we are going to return to the same maker, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you understand that and realize that, you are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He who made you is the same one you are going to return to one day. He has left you on earth with a purpose for a short period of time. On earth, you need to make sure you fulfill two types of rights. One known as Hukukullahi, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to worship Allah. You worship the one who made you and abstain from worshiping everything besides that maker. So Hukukullah, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have worshiping Allah alone, we have, for example, the prayer that we should be doing five times a day. We have so many other things, the dress code, etc. We have the pillars of Islam that we should be understanding, adopting with pleasure. It should be done with pleasure. I always say when we pray, there are several types of people. The first type, those who don't pray at all. The second, those who pray but a few times a day if it fits their routine. Then you have those who are regular, who pray regularly. May Allah make us from among them. But there are two types. Those who pray considering it a burden or considering it a duty unto Allah that is difficult for them to fulfill. Those are one type of people. But the highest of the lot. And that's where we should be trying to get to Wallahi. Those who pray considering it an honor and a pleasure to be praying subhanallah so if you do something because you have to do it you have done it but if you do something because you want to do it you do it in a better way and you do it in a more acceptable way and you make sure it is done properly correctly with all honor there is a difference between doing something because you have to do it and doing something because you now want to do it May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the highest level those who fulfill that salah and that prayer because they would love to do it. As soon as the time comes in, they are concerned about this prayer and they take their time in it. If you take a look at the life of Brother Junaid Jamshed, yes, when it came to the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there was a turning point in his life. There was. A turning point, not when he became old and when he couldn't walk. Allah took him away very healthy. He was not in need of someone due to a disability, etc. Allah saved him from that. But at the same time, 
He turned when he was very, very healthy. When he was at his peak, young, energetic. How many of us young, energetic, we still plan to sin. We still plan that adultery. We still go out and watch pornography. We still go to the clubs. We still want to use the drugs. We still do not quit our bad habits, even if it is as simple as smoking. Because you know smoking kills. They are not allowed to sell you that box without confirming them that it kills. So if you want in your peak, when you are healthy, when you are young, when you are energetic, when you are bubbling with your energies, you turn to Allah, you cut your bad habits, you will be blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith says, seven types of people will be granted a special shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. One of them is... A young person who grew up with all those energies and bubbling with every form of goodness and strength, but they used it in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is something unique. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and may Allah grant us the ability to utilize these energies in the right direction. So, if you take a careful look, you will realize that at a young age to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not easy. I know when I lived in Medina Munawwara for many years, I used to see the hujjaj coming in for hajj. And a lot of the times you used to see the elderly and the old coming for hajj. And then I started inquiring and I found out that in some countries when you apply for hajj, your name only comes through 30 years later. 30 years later. Subhanallah. 20 years later, the name comes through. We are fortunate, mashallah. You apply this year, next year, your name is in and you're already there. There are certain countries like Indonesia, when it comes to Malaysia, etc. It does not just take one move. You need to apply. There is a procedure. And... In Indonesia in particular, it takes long. The elderly, by the time you get your turn, you're already old. But I also found that there is another group of people who believe that Hajj is only for those who are old. As the years were passing, we started educating people to say, and it wasn't only me, I was young, I was still a student, but we used to get an opportunity to speak to a lot. They'll come for Umrah, but they won't come for Hajj. You say, why? I'm not yet ready. That was the answer. A lot of us have that. I'm not yet ready. Wallahi, did you know that Allah is the one who decides when you are going to go for Hajj by giving you the capacity and the ability to go. Once you are able and capable, it is farad upon you. There's no way. When you have wealth and ability, you have to use that wealth in a specific way. Subhanallah. So to be able to go for Hajj and change your entire life is not just for the elderly. You don't wait until you're old to change your life because you don't know if you're going to see that age. Subhanallah. So if we look at the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers, my sisters, it's important for us to turn to become better people. But it's not good for you to think that I'm close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when your attitude towards the rest of the creatures of the same Allah is unacceptable. So you have some people, they will read salah five times a day. 10 times a day. When I say 10, the five is compulsory and the other five, they add voluntary prayers, mashallah. But when they speak to people, they have an attitude. When they look at people, they belittle them. When they look at the others, they want to harm them. They cheat, they deceive, they don't know how to talk. They hurt people's feelings. They hurt their own wives' feelings and their husbands' feelings because of the way they speak to them. What fear of Allah do you have? What was the point of the salah that you engaged in for long hours when in actual fact your attitude is supposed to reflect the acceptance of that particular salah? When you are a pious person, it shows in your character what we call the akhlaq. Don't have the akhlaq. You can read salah 50 times a day. You are not pious. You can have a beard that goes down stretching beyond you. It doesn't make you pious. Over and above that, you need akhlaq. 
Because Allah says there are two things, not one. Hukukullahi and hukukul ibadi. The rights of Allah. Yes, we know that. But they are rights of the worshippers of Allah. The rest of the creatures of Allah. We speak about humanitarian activity. We speak about people reaching out to those in need. Sometimes we are wealthy. It's not hard for us to take out a tenor or to take out some money. Sometimes in the thousands and for some even in the tens of thousands. But your attitude at home stinks. Be charitable at home. Change your attitude. Be kind to your spouse, your children, your parents, your in-laws. There will be politics. That's Allah's plan. There has to be politics. That's the way Allah made us. We are all different. But the winner is he or she who realizes and understands that I need to sacrifice for this. It's an effort. It's a challenge. It is called hukukul ibad. The rights of the rest of the creatures of Allah. What's the common factor? Why do I need to be kind to animals? Why do I need to be kind to the non-Muslims? Because they are creatures of the same maker who made you. So you are related by having the same maker. That's how you need to be kind to them. And that's why Allah created animals. Allah created dogs and pigs and monkeys and all these animals. Subhanallah. Not without purpose. Allah created them to test you. What are you going to do? Allah says, this is halal, this is haram. But it does not mean if, if something is haram, like a pig, for example, I can just go and start slicing the nose of the pig, slice out the leg of the pig, say you're a dirty animal, you're haram, so I can harm you and I can... No, that haram animal has a ruh, it has a soul. You as a true Muslim need to be kind to that animal. You need to be kind. Who said and where is it that if an animal is not permissible to consume or if it is najis, impure, for example, that you're allowed to be harmful or you're allowed to hurt that animal. You're allowed to cause pain to the animal. So if you're not allowed to cause pain to that animal, what do you think would be your duty unto the rest of the same creature, humankind? I can give you a simple example. I've said it in the past. I want to repeat it. There is a hadith of a man who was forgiven as a result of quenching the thirst of a dog. After he went into the well, he came up having drunk his own water. He noticed a dog sniffing the sand out of thirst. And he says, لَقَدْ بَلَغَ هَذَا الْكَلْبِ مِنَ الْعَطَشِ مِثْلَ مَا كَانَ قَدْ بَلَغَ مِنِّي He says, Wallahi, this dog here has reached a level of thirst similar to the level of thirst that I have. So let me go back into the well. I don't have anything to put the water in, but I will use my own shoe or my leather sock and I will fill the water in it and take it out and go to the dog. What are we talking about? A dog. I will go to the dog and I will quench the thirst of this dog. Subhanallah. So Allah loved that deed so much, so much. He was compassionate to a dog. Allah forgave him, subhanallah. Allah forgave him. My point is, why didn't the hadith say a kitten? Why didn't the hadith say a bird? Why did the hadith say an animal that is a dog? And you and I know as Muslimin, there are rules and regulations regarding purity and impurity when it comes to the dog, etc. Or relationship with the dog, but this hadith refers to the dog. It was simple to refer to another human being as well. The man went in, he quenched himself, he came up, he saw another human being. The hadith says, no, it was a dog. Why? To show you my beloved brothers and sisters and I and everyone else that in Islam, if you are achieving forgiveness by being compassionate to an animal such as a dog, then indeed you can achieve paradise by being compassionate towards another human being, even if they don't share your faith or your values. Remember that. You can achieve paradise through that. Human being is known as Ashraful Makhluqat, the most noble, the most high in terms of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why we have something known as Hukukul Ibad, the rights of the rest of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, now we go back and take a look at the life of Al-Faqid. Rahmatullahi alayhi. 
and you will notice both. When I heard of the tragic death, I was shocked. I want to let you in on something. You might ask me, have you ever met him? Well, we knew him before we met him. And Allah wanted me to meet or wanted us to meet not a long time ago. How did I meet? Subhanallah, we had one thing in common, more than one thing, but one thing in common was we both traveled a lot. So one day I was, I entered the lounge with my wife in Dubai at the airport. And we decided we'll go in, we'll just pray and we'll come out. As I'm coming out, I notice Brother Junaid, mashallah, not too long ago. And he looked at me, looked at him, we recognized each other, gave each other a hug. Mashallah, tabarakallah, we sat down. He was with his wife, I was with my wife, subhanallah. And we had a beautiful chat for about 45 minutes, the contents, inshallah, on another occasion. But at the same time, the point that I learned was that when Allah loves you, and he wants Jannah for you. He makes you do things that you don't know. Will result inshallah. In you dying in a condition that was possibly the best condition you were in. Compared to the other days of your life. And I tell you why I say this. Because I have spoken about brother Junaid many, many years back in some of my talks. The example was given, some of you may have heard it, when I said, never lose hope regarding a person in the clubs or in the nightclubs or anywhere else. Never lose hope regarding them turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person can be a pop star. A person can be a singer, an actress, a person can do whatever. If their life is being led against the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, never lose hope. Don't ever say this person's a right off. Have hope because. And then I gave a few examples. One of them was of brother Junaid. We all know where he started off. And we all know there was a turning point in his life that he used to talk about. And he was happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him change. There was something that he perhaps had that Allah loved so much that Allah made him change. For me now, when I'm standing here today, after we've heard about the tragic death and demise, may Allah grant him Jannatul Firdaus and his families and the others who passed away in the same tragic incident and all the marhumin of the Ummah. May Allah give them Jannatul Firdaus and may he give us Jannah the day we go as well. What I learn is, or what I learned very quickly was that all along he did not know that Allah was preparing him for this day. He did not know that Allah was preparing him for this day. What was the date that it happened? Can someone tell me? The 7th? 7th of December. Okay. 7th of December, this happened. And what was the date when he turned and changed his entire life? Does anyone know that date? Or what year was it? Anyone? Many years back, right? Many years back. That day when he changed his life, subhanallah, do you know what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that 7 December 2016 you're going, now we're going to make you change your life in such a way that you're in a new mode, preparation for the day you die. That's it. Had he continued in his way, he would have been a popular man. He would have been successful. He would have been wealthy. Allah gave him the popularity and the success and the wealth. But Allah gave him a totally different path and a new crowd of people. Some followed with and others did not. Subhanallah. It's amazing how... You change your life, my brothers and sisters, because you have to die.
That's the reason you have to go back to Allah. He who gave you the life, you have no option. Either you learn a lesson from what has happened to him or you die in another direction. It's up to you. The days are gone. How long do you want to disobey Allah for? There are others who had it easier to disobey Allah. They had more popularity and fame in the wrong. They had more of everything in the wrong. They decided to quit it and give it up as difficult as it may have been and Allah gave them honor in a different way subhanallah that's a hadith the prophet has said it and we've seen it with our eyes so many occasions whoever humbles himself for the sake of Allah Allah will elevate his status there we are when we sit and listen to the life of this great man or Whatever he's done, a lot of people think, oh, mashallah, yeah, that way he was a good man. He was, ask yourself, what about me? He is gone. His a'mal are taken with him. His deeds are taken with him. What deeds have you done? Don't think of it as a far cry. Don't think of it as something that you will not be able to achieve. No, wallahi, you can achieve even more with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You require dedication. Subhanallah. Many people are popular on earth, but they are unknown in the heavens because their popularity is for something that does not move the angels with the good deeds that are written. The speech about him in the heavens is not there. Subhanallah. Doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Fadkuruni adhkurkum? Remember me and I will remember you. Another narration says wherever people have gathered in order to remember Allah, to talk about him, Allah talks about them to the angels. So some people are well known here, not known there, but others, they may not be known that well here, but they are known in the heavens. Subhanallah. They are known in the heavens because they cry every day for the sake of Allah. They engage in the dhikr of Allah. They remember Allah. They read the Quran tilawa every day. So they are known. They are known by all the angels. I was reading one of the tafasir of the story of Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam. And if you take a look at that story, he, he was in the belly of the whale for a certain period of time. And Allah says, فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ لَلَبِثَ فِي بَطْنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ had he not been from amongst those who declare the tasbih of Allah regularly, he would have remained in the belly of the whale forever. So one of the Mufassireen says that when he used to engage in tasbih, the angels used to carry that to the heavens, the deeds. And one day when that sound came from the belly of the whale, right inside the water in the bed of the ocean, the angels say, this is a familiar voice, but from a different place. We take this man's deeds every day going up. Good deeds. Today he is calling out to Allah. Same voice, but from a totally different place. Subhanallah. Allah's assistance and help came. Hence the verse Allah says, had he not been from amongst those who engaged in tasbih, he would not have been helped. It shows all of us. Engage in tasbih, praise Allah, declare the praise of Allah, read the Quran, change your life and you will find the day you die, that turning point would have been preparation for your death so that you can achieve Jannatul Firdaus. So I'd like to reiterate and repeat that as for our brother, Allah bestowed upon him the favor of turning. We don't have a guarantee where he is gone, but we definitely do know that he is in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we definitely do know that he led a life that was quite transparent. He led a life of goodness. He was a humanitarian of note. He did deeds that were hidden from people. Hidden. Found out later on. Oh, this is what he did. Oh, that's what he was doing. Oh, this is what happened. Oh, that's what happened. How many of us have done good deeds that we keep a secret. No one knows. Very few, the minimum who need to know, know. 
I want to teach you one thing and the, remember, the reminder is for myself as well. When we commit sin, we are very quick to do it privately. We don't want anyone to see because it's a sin. When we do good deeds, shaitan wants to tap us to say, you know what, just raise your nose up a little bit and you know, put your shoulder up a bit and just walk. <clears throat> that was me, you know. Subhanallah, you did a good deed. You want everyone to know. I tell you, do some good deeds as well that are totally between you and Allah. No one knows. So that when you get to the hereafter, your bad deeds are a secret between you and Allah. But when Allah sees that you have so many good deeds that are a secret between you and Him, He may wipe out those bad deeds and say, you know what? I'm not interested in all this. For you is Jannatul Firdaus. It can happen. May Allah grant us Jannah. So do some good deeds. A few things, small things. Don't underestimate the value of a deed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Grant us acceptance and may Allah make it, inshallah, a means of our entry into Jannatul Firdaus. So while we make dua for our brother, may Allah forgive him and grant him Jannatul Firdaus. Indeed, there is a lesson in his life and from his life. We need to change our lives for the sake of Allah. We definitely need to understand that death comes to anyone at any time, no matter who you are. But the luckiest of the lot are those who die in a good condition. Those who die having asked Allah's forgiveness. Go and listen to some of the songs. From those songs you will hear or some of the talks. You will hear speeches and songs about the hereafter. About the meeting with Allah. About the preparation. About the quitting of sins. About so much that we are looking forward to. And here we are. We've got exactly there. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a turning point. Brothers and sisters, I can go on and on. But I think what I've said, I pray that it motivates myself to do good. And I pray that it motivates all of us to do good. For indeed, if you want to benefit the deceased, you need to know that the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ speaks of three main ways that you can benefit the deceased. Or that the deceased actually benefits from what they've done during their lives. One of them is when they've left behind knowledge, sound knowledge or guidance. And people follow that guidance. The hadith actually says, When the child of Adam, when a human being passes away, they are cut from their deeds. The deeds stop except from three things. What are the three things? One of them is knowledge that you have imparted during your life and people are benefiting from it and it's helping them and it's changing them. So when you listen to a good speech after a person passed away and you changed your life as a result, a full reward of your change goes to that person. Did you know that? Full reward. When you, for example, have benefited from some knowledge that someone has left behind, they get a full reward of it. Similarly, sadaqatun jariya. In my life, if I have a charity that is continuous, say, for example, a tree that I have planted and it has grown or a school that has been built or any form of book that I may have printed or some form of dissemination of goodness and it continues after my death for as long as it continues, I keep getting the reward. And the last one is if I've left behind pious offspring, those who will make dua for me, those who will make dua for me after I'm gone, I definitely benefit from that dua. So we say, Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, grant him Jannatul Firdaus. Oh Allah, forgive his family, forgive the marhumin of the ummah. And all of us who are here, those who have passed away from our families, may Allah grant them Jannah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them rahmah. And all those who are listening, whether it is live or later on, may Allah grant the marhumin of your families Jannatul Firdaus. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them. And may He make it easy for us the day we go. And may we be such that we do not regret that we did not change ourselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The day we go, we should be from among those who are blessed by Allah. Keep asking Allah that blessing. And never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. No matter what you've done, He will definitely forgive you. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.